So Taoiseach, uh, I think it's important that you hear the voices and experiences of people who are struggling to get by. Uh, for example, this woman who says, my husband is 70, he's still working, he can't stop at the moment because if he stops, we know it's going to be very difficult for us just to live. Or this mother who says, I've started to cut back on my food shop, the price of everything has gone up, everything, the kind of things that we can't do without. Or another mother who says, I now go to a food bank, it's embarrassing, but if I don't go, we'll go hungry. I'm there every Tuesday, every Thursday, and it's packed to the rafters. Thishuk, these are the words of thousands of people who took to the streets on Saturday afternoon because they are pushed now to the brink by an ever worsening cost of living crisis. And despite the hardship that they face, they see a government refusing to take action that will make a difference. Households are now caught in the eye of a perfect storm of soaring prices. They're ripped off by extortionate rents and mortgage repayments, ripped off by big energy bills, ripped off at the pumps for petrol and diesel, ripped off by sharp increases in the cost of groceries. People face unbearable pressure. And they all said one thing with one voice on Saturday. They said, we are at breaking point. You see, they can't wait until October for the budget and then wait again until January for measures or relief to kick in. People are suffering now, Tishuk. They're being pushed to the edge now and they need government to act now, today. So an emergency budget is needed because people face a disaster as they struggle to afford the basics. Mothers who can't afford a new pair of shoes for their child, parents struggling to put breakfast on the table, and elderly people choosing between heating and eating. You ask these people who are in dire sta straits to wait. Well, that's just not right, Taoiseach. At Saturday's protest in Cork, Katrina Toomey, who runs Penny Dinners, a great lady, you know her well, Taoiseach. She said, we fed over 500 people today. I can get through everything else, but when children are hungry and their parents are crying, well, that gets to me. But that's the Ireland of 2022. How on earth can anyone in government look these families in the eye and tell them that they have done enough? What these people live through day and daily tells us explicitly that enough has not been done. The response from government has been slow, it's lacked urgency, and we all know, Taoiseach, there are international factors at play, and we accept that the government can't do everything, but you can do more. Without emergency support, families will face a very difficult back-to-school period and a brutal winter as energy costs continue to rise. Ton kustus marak tale imaha o smakt, to chauli imwail fui laher, kahi an realtis ai gahorj er skala nagar kema sha, tastien busheid egendale uin loirak tishuk. Cabinet met this morning and we're told that the cost of living crisis was high on the agenda. I really hope there was a realisation at that meeting that households cannot wait another six months and that government cannot pack up for the summer and leave workers and families in the lurch. I believe that you must now respond with urgency and introduce an emergency budget. First of all, I, I want to say this, that the there is no question uh, that the war on Ukraine has exacerbated uh, very significantly what was uh, an emerging inflationary cycle coming from the pandemic and the fact that economies had rebounded, rebounded so quickly from the pandemic and there were supply and demand issues. And that's created huge pressures on families and on households. And the government has responded and the government responded quickly, more quickly than other countries um, across Europe. Um, and in particular, uh, the government uh, introduced very significant measures in terms of hiking up the, the fuel uh, allowance, um, over 1,139, uh, a 55% increase alone on the free fuel allowance. Uh, we reduced the excise duty on petrol, on diesel and green diesel, um, and we also reduced VAT from 13.5% to 9% uh, on gas and electricity. We gave 200 euros to every 
a single household um, across the country. We cut the annual PSO uh, from €52 Euros to minus 75. We launched a national retrofitting scheme. Um, and of course, we also put a cap on uh, trans school transport fees for families. We cut public transport fares by 20%, with an addition 50% um, cut on fares for young people. We lowered the threshold for the drug payment scheme to €80 Euros per month. That benefits over 70,000 families. We brought forward a working family payment budget increase. We abolished the 80 euro inpatient hospital charge for children, um, and so on. And we brought in specific schemes for haulage, uh, for tillage sectors, um, and for hospitality. Um, and the bottom line is this: that over about 2.4 billion, 2.4 billion has already been spent um, uh, on cost of living measures. Uh, now. We're, not, we're asking nobody to wait six months. But what we are saying is this, we cannot chase inflation every month. I mean, the World Bank is predicting, or sorry, warning against the risk of stagflation, the kind of thing we experienced in the 1970s. And whereas the 70s was caused by initial oil price shock, it was the second and third rounds of inflation that drove it on for the next 10 years. I don't want that to happen in Ireland right, for the next 10 years here. And the, the wider economy in Ireland is still growing. So we need to protect our economic growth as long as we possibly can. We need to protect, protect all those people that are in jobs, uh, 2.5 million people working. So we can't take risks with the economy or with inflation either. Uh, and so we need to do it in a calibrated way and in a strategic way to alleviate pressures on the public. And that idea of protecting the jobs in the economy is something you should give more attention to. Because I think if, if we're to follow, from the outset, if we had followed your advice, uh, I think we would be into an even greater uh, inflationary cycle. And the SRI report is a good reminder of that in terms of the importance of targeting uh, and not just doing wholesale cuts across the board, as you have advocated time and time um, again. Because I think you would damage the economy. I don't think you get the enterprise side of the economy or want to get it. Uh, and you, in, in my view, uh, we have to watch that side of it. And we have to avoid uh, stagflation in itself. But what we are prepared to do, we have taken action. And we're going to take more action uh, to alleviate pressures on people and households. And I am worried about the winter period, because we've seen what Putin has done now already this week in reducing gas supplies to Germany, reducing gas supplies to your other European customers. That's going to have an impact on our energy situation. And he's leveraging, leveraging in particular to create as maximum pressure as he can for the winter period. So we do have to uh, allocate our resources in the optimal way which in my view is to protect people right throughout the winter period, right throughout the winter period and beyond the winter. That's the big uh, objective Thank really we should could... share, <clears throat> is to get people through what would up. be a difficult winter period across the board. And I think the budget gives us the broadest and most comprehensive way of doing that yeah, we'll and making sure that now, some please. of the measures then would be applicable from day one of the budget um, announcement. Deputy MacDonald. So first things first, Taoiseach, I'm not asking you to chase inflation. I am asking you to recognise the reality that people are struggling now, in June, and that people will continue to struggle through the summer months, not to mention the winter that's ahead of them. You say that we need to protect our economy, and we do, but Taoiseach, above all else, we need to protect our people. Above all else, we cannot take risks with our people or the risks that have children hungry and parents crying. That's the reality. And you are unfortunately asking people to wait. And I ask you with all sincerity, not in a spirit of political rivalry or competition, I am appealing to you. I am appealing to you to change that position because families are suffering now and they desperately need measures targeted, thoughtful measures to give them breathing space now. You said to me that you're not asking uh, families to wait. If your insistence that the October budget is the moment when relief will be deliverable, then in fact you are asking people to wait. And that is wrong, Thank Taoiseach. You, it's not real. It's, it <clears throat> is totally unfair. So I ask you again, what measures will you introduce with all due haste? Now, not in October, but now. Thank you. Taoiseach. Well, I would say, Deputy, that you have been asking us to chase inflation from the very beginning. That has been a consistent theme uh, that you've been articulating since the beginning of the year. And 
By the way, protecting the economy is protecting our people. <coughs> protecting jobs is protecting our people. Uh, and we shouldn't underestimate the economic recovery that has happened, which gives us some buffer. Not totally, but gives us some buffer to protect people um, against what was predicted coming out of COVID. No one predicted we'd be at two and a half million people working uh, in the immediate aftermath of COVID-19. People thought that would take until 2024 to happen. But thankfully, uh, the economy has rebounded much faster. But the inflation is a huge pressure on people. And it's largely driven by the energy strategy of Putin. And he wants to sow discord across the West. He wants to create maximum pressure on Western democracies through his energy policies, through his food policies, preventing grain from getting into Europe, and through migration pressures also, and terrorizing people out of Ukraine. And we cannot allow him to win that strategic battle Thank that you, he is waging on us. When I said, I, I, Time you is suggested up. No, uh, earlier that we were asking people to wait six months, we're not. We're asking people to wait, wait six months. Um, at all. Uh, what we are saying Time is, is up, because please. we have to go through expenditure uh, in terms of detailed department expenditure to deal with issues like childcare, housing, now, and, other, sorry, 